بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يتلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في نار My dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome for, to all mu- non-Muslims today. I hope you can understand me good, it's loud enough. Also, in the, wo- in the stage of the woman, at the stage of the woman, it's also loud enough. You can understand me, okay? But because this is always the, sa- the first question, because sometimes I'm giving a lecture and after 30 minutes I hear, yeah, the women are not understanding anything. So I have to begin from, <laughs> from the begin- one more time from the beginning. The topic of today, yes, I saw today in the, in, the, in the newspaper, my journey, boxing champion tells us of his amazing journey to peace. It was nice that our Sheikh mentioned some points, or stressing some points. Maybe I will also talk about this point, because I was more prepared to talk about the arguments that led me towards Islam, you know, but we will stress this point also, inshallah. And I was wondering because when you hear boxing champion, you know, maybe the mo- maybe most people think, yeah, this guy maybe accept Islam because he got too much punches to his head, you know. <laughs> so of course he accepted Islam. <laughs> So I don't know if this, if this you know, even, even in Germany, you know, we sometimes don't know, is this advertisement so good, you know. When I accepted Islam, you know, uh, also the, the journalists came to me and they asked me, why did you accept Islam? And also Muhammad Ali accepted Islam and some boxers like Mike Tyson accepted Islam. Is there any connection between accepting Islam and be, being a boxer? Yes, you know I say to them, I did not accept Islam because Muhammad Ali accepted Islam and he's my role model in sports or in boxing, but because I'm convinced that this is the true way to God, the, the ultimate way to salvation. That's the reason. And why accepted so many boxers Islam? I mean, there are a lot of sportsmen, a lot of F- famous sportlers who accepted Islam. Maybe there's one reason, and this reason is that sport is like, like a mirror of life. You know, you are a sportler, you want to be the best. You know, the purpose of your life is you want best, you want fame. And then you realize, you know, it's like you know, you want that the people know you, that you are successful and everything. And finally you realize, in a short period, that this is all nothing. Worthy nothing. Why? Because look like some to be the people, you know, they were very famous and after a short period nobody knows them anymore. And they know, look, today... You know, it's like, for me, for example, okay, I quitted the sport and I was in a quite young age, 22, 23 years old. So I had everything in front of me, but I saw other people. You know, it's the time you are young, you are a young guy, and all the people are saying, oh, this, he's a talented boxer, or he's a talented football, soccer player, or he has talent for this. You know, you are young. Then two, three years later, Finally, you're not young anymore. You're senior now. It's, it's only a short period. It's like life. Can you remember when you were, for example, 15 years old? You know, this was yesterday. Now you're 30. I'm 31 now. You know, when I was 15 years, 15 years I was yesterday. It's very fast. And in sports, it's even faster. 
so you begin to think then you are finally you know for, for example a good friend of mine he was always he was one of my best friends his name is Felix Storm if you go to the internet Felix Storm he is a middleweight world champion now by the way he is also Muslim from Germany he is a middleweight world champion he was you know when we were young people I have a video when I was with him he was maybe 13 and I'm 40 and we looked like little children we were together in the together boxing you know we were boxing together you know now after a short period he is now also 30 years old he is not young anymore and, this, and, and you say oh look, look how fast it goes and who thinks about this about the life, about our life how fast you become old how fast you your death comes he thinks about it because in, in sports when you retire it's like you died and so I think that a lot of sportsmen who uh, saw this fame and everything they think about life and maybe this is the reason why they become later on Muslims and uh, discover this religion this is maybe a reason I was asked and this is also one reason for me you know there are a lot of reasons I will illustrate this inshallah you know but first of all I want to mention something I mention very often at the beginning of the lecture this lecture is first of all for or not first of all but it's for Muslims that we benefit, that we learn some arguments because I have to mention that we as Muslims that we as Muslims have an obligation and this obligation is to deliver this message because we love for every human being the best and I ask you what is the best for us Muslims? Islam this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran in Surah, in Surah 5, chapter 5 verse, verse 3 He says اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورديت لكم الإسلام دينا And the meaning of this word is that the Islam is the biggest ni'ma, the biggest favor what Allah gave you. Why? Because we believe that, is, that Islam is the key to paradise and we as Muslims we have to be people who love for other people the best like the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, he loved for every human being the best he was not interested in getting money in getting rulership or something like this no he was interested in you rescue the people from hellfire so even he went to young Jewish Shep, you know, he went to his bed when he was dying and he called him to Islam because he wanted to rescue his soul so he went to him and, and we have to have the same attitude and maybe we can learn some arguments even for the Muslims some Muslims, they don't really know why they don't really realize what ni'mah, what favor is Islam to them and so maybe I can help you a bit to give you some arguments and to realize what favor Islam is upon us. The second group is are non-Muslims. I hope that I can remember some non-Muslims who are here. Unfortunately, we are not too much non-Muslims. But maybe I can remember them about the shortness of life and how important it is to look for the true way and maybe I give them some arguments that are convincing them I hope but I give every human being whether Muslim or non-Muslim I give him one advice because I cannot lead anybody to the way None, nobody only Allah, the Almighty God, can show you the true way. We are only asbab, we are only reasons that Allah creates. So, I give every human being the advice to raise his hands to the heaven and say, 
Like the prophet teaches, we are not too much non-Muslims, but maybe I can remember them about the shortness of life and how important it is to look for the true way. And maybe I give them some arguments that are convincing them, I hope. But I give every human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, I give him one advice. Because I cannot lead anybody to the way. Man, nobody. Only Allah, the Almighty God, can show you the true way. We are only asbab, we are only reasons that Allah creates. So, I give every human being the advice to raise his hands to the heaven and say like the Prophet teached us Allahumma arini al-haqqa haqqa warzuqna tiba'a warini al-ba'atil al-ba'atil zuqna shinaba that means show me the truth as truth and help me to follow it and show me the wrong way as the wrong way and help me to abstain from it this is the way what, this is the advice I give everybody when he goes home. Non-Muslims and also the Muslims because in Islam you have also to follow the right Islam. Because there are some people who understand the Islam wrong. But this is another topic. Now to my story. I was a Protestant. And my family was not really a practicing uh, a religious Christian family. But my mother, for example, sometimes my mother, she uh, reminds me about some facts. She said that I, or, or she says that I was always interest, very interested in religion. And my notes were always very good in religion in school because I have always this inclination towards religion. I wanted to know about religion. And later on I went to a very, very good school, a Christian school. This Christian school was actually... Uh, built up by some monks by some monks and later on it was a school only for boys when I was there only for boys no ikhtilat because it was um, as I told you it was built up by monks so they were really concentrating also to teach us some of these Christian beliefs and also Christian values and I have to say right now, I really benefited from this. Why? Because a lot of values, or most values we have in Christianity, the, the, uh, that, uh, that, that you find in Christianity, they are, not, they, they are standing not in contradiction to the values in Islam. But we believe that all this religion came actually at the beginning from the same Almighty God, but that in Christianity, in Judaism, there were some things changed. But you even now, you find a lot of things benefiting. And in, from our perspective, from our Muslim perspective, right. You still find it. But of course, there are crucial issues, crucial differences, the main differences, that let us say to everybody, and we don't want to insult or hurt anybody, you have to follow Islam. For example, Trinity, Atonement, Theory, Inherited Sin and these things. But I will come later on to these topics, inshallah. But what I, want to, what, what I want to mention is, I really benefited from this. So, later on, I went when I was 13 or 14 years old to like um, special lessons to church. For, it's for confirmation, tafbit in Arabic. And in this durus, as I told you, I was always very interested. I was always thinking about these verses in the Bible. And I had a discussion with the priest there. It was a priest or a minister, I don't remember anymore. Uh, but he was someone who studied, uh, studied Christianity. And I found there something what seemed to me contradicting what seemed to me contradicting and I asked him about this and he said to me yeah there are contradictions in the Bible 
And a lot of priests, a lot of ministers in the West are saying this. Confirming this, saying there are some things wrong. For example, now you find a lot of Christian ministers, priests, bishops, who, don't believe, who believe in the, evolu- uh, in the theory of Darwin. For example, who say uh, the, 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 the story of Adam and Eve is only a legend. Like this. But this was not the topic, other topics. So they say, for example, I had a discussion with a priest about Trinity, Trinity and I mentioned to him some uh, contradictions in the Bible. And he said to me, yeah, there are contradictions in the Bible. For example, he, he mentioned also one. He said, yeah, the names of the apostles are in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, in the uh, um, Gospels are different. He mentioned, but it's no problem. You know, but for me at this time when he said, confirmed that there are mistakes, and he believed this as a minister or as a priest, I say to myself, how come I can believe in a book where a priest or a minister is confirming that there are some mistakes? So, even right now, I would give you the advice, for example, for non-Muslims, also for Muslims, if you have the Bible, you can, for example, look at Matthew 27, verse 4. It's written there, it's written there that Judah, who told the Jews, and uh, to told the Jews where they can find Jesus, to capture him, that he, that he died, why? Because of suicide. He got money from this uh, because he told them where G- G- Jesus were, according to the Bible. And he took this money and he said to the, to the people, to the Jews, to this Pharisee, he said to them, you know, I don't want the money anymore. You know, it's, it's not good that I did this. He has a bad feeling about it. And they said, what? We don't want your money. And he takes the money and throws it into the temple. And then he goes away and makes suicide. By hanging himself. You understand me upstairs? Okay. Then afterwards, in the book of Acts, Amal al Rusul bil Lugha Arabiya, in chapter 1, verse 18, the, top, the story is totally different. The story is totally different because he had not make, uh, made tawbah. You know that he said, Oh, I'm sorry, I, it was better if I don't do it. No. He takes the money and buys from this money a field. And on this field, he goes in front and he falls down and his uh, stomach goes like this and he dies. So it's for me that two, at least two main contradictions. For example, if you go to the Old Testament, I don't want to hurt anybody. I just mentioned this, and I think you have to understand me as a non-Muslim, as a Christian, and this is for me a clear contradiction. If there is a clear contradiction, my solution or my thinking was that then this book cannot be a trustful book. A book that I can trust in. Why? Because I thought... Now, what, what, I cannot know what was written by human beings and what was written by God. Or what was written by uh, uh, people who, who were inspired by, uh, by God. Where do I know this from? I don't know. So, I left this religion. And I believe me, at the beginning, it was painful for me. It was not like, yeah, okay, now I leave it. No, it was painful for me. It was like, you know, you believed in God and now you are in doubt. You know, if you don't believe in God or you have doubt about the existence of God, it's like, you know, you have no hope. What will happen afterwards? You are in the darkness now. So, what did I do afterwards? I was around 14 years old. It's a long time ago. What did I do afterwards? So, I... Lived a normal life like every young guy in Germany. But I, of course, I was interested in boxing. I want to be the champion and trained and everything. You know, and there were some important details that happened. You know, with, uh, in, uh, in, in, when I was 15 years old, I 
was in the German championship and I became uh, number two there. And afterwards I, was, uh, I went to a boarding school. You know Germany was divided between east part and west part. And in the east part, maybe you know it, they were very uh, motivated for sports and there were, uh, you know, sports had a very high, uh, high um, status there. So, um, I went to a boarding school in East Berlin, you know, it was now all uh, one Germany, but it was still there that there were the trainers from the East side and so on. And Germany was, for example, in the 1988 Olympics in Seoul, it was the last, last Olympics with East and West Germany, divided. I think, uh, when I remember right, East Germany, the GD, uh, GDR, German Democratic Republic, they were the second or the third place after Russia, as, uh, Soviet, Soviet Union at this time, and USA. But I think even they were at this Olympics about the second place after Russia, I don't, uh, after Soviet Union, I don't remember anymore, but at least the third place, they were very much stressing on sports, you know, that even in the, in the kindergarten, you know, there came trainers, coach to the kindergarten, and they looked, oh, this is a small guy, maybe he's good for ice skating or something, or gymnastics, or oh, this is a tall guy, maybe this is, he's good for basketball or uh, something like this, you know, so they always looked, so they began in kindergarten, to look who can be a good sportsman for what, for, what, uh, for what sport. So I went there on the boarding school and it was still the system of a lot of my, uh, my friends, they, were still grow, they grew up in this East German system. You know, like, and in this system the religion had actually almost no, no value. Because it's influenced by Karl Marx, communist, and we know all that, uh, you know, religion is for them nothing, because they're atheists. And so most people, they were atheists. And I, I lost the belief in, in Christianity, but I didn't like it that most people, they were atheists, and, uh, you know, and I saw the lack of relationship to God and the relationship to other people, you know, how to have to behave to other people, how you have to help, you know, I saw a lack there. So, why I mention this, I mention this, uh, this to, because there's also a detail what made me afterwards think, think about religions, about the truth in religions. And of course, at this time, you know, I was living like a normal guy in the West, you know going from there to there, and I was very, you know, always thinking sport, 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 sport. I was later on in the national team of Germany, in the amateurs and so. And then also when I came back, after I made this Shahada uh, Thanawiya, it's like A level in, in Britain, I don't know how you, uh, what it is in, in America, There's a high school, uh, yes, after I came out from high school, I went back to my hometown, and I began as a professional boxer in a very famous um, stable there. It's, uh, the, the, there were also some world champions. For example, the world champion now, Valuyev, he was world champion. You know, uh, Valuyev, the heavyweight world champion, he's, he's also from the same manager who was my manager, Wilfried Sauerland is his name. And, you know, I began there to train with the trainer, his name is Uli Wegner. You can see this all in internet. He is the trainer of some world champions like now Arthur Abraham, the former middleweight champion, and before Sven Otke, Markus by all world champions, or Tost, my Olympic gold medalist in Barcelona. So it, I began there, and at the same time, I began with civil service. In Germany, after high school, you have to choose between army, you go like one year or eleven or ten months to army or to civil service. And I chose the civil service because I wanted to make my boxing training in Cologne. And when you go to army, they send you to any place in Germany. I want to be with my family. Well, this was the reason. And from this civil service I benefited a lot. Why? Because, you know, our job was it to bring food to older people, to elderly people who cannot cook for themselves. 
You know, and you have to realize, you know, a lot of people, they always look to the West. They say, oh, in the West, look how nice it is. All people are happy. This is what you are seeing in the TV. In Germany, for example, it's one of the richest countries in Europe. Every 48 minutes as a suicide. And you see, for example, that older people are often sent to, to old people's houses. Because the family is not caring for them. You know, like in the Islamic environment, it's always like this, you know, that the old people get a kind of more respect. Why? Why is this? Because our life in Islam, our vision of life is different. Because you don't think like, yo, I'm living from A to B. Of course, not all people in the West are thinking like this. But a lot. You think you're not, you're not thinking like, I'm living from A to B, 50, 60, 70, 80 years, and the purpose of my life is to get a lot of money, or to have fun, or something like this. So, when there's an old man or old woman in my family, you know, say, in my way. I want to go two times a year, I want to go to holidays. What will I do with them? So the best is, and then the Satan comes to you and gives you a nice picture. The best is you send him to old people's house. So a lot of old people, then they can play together with, uh, you know, Scott or something like this. Yeah, it's like this. And a lot of people are sending to this house, they are full packed. And who is not, who will not be sent to this house, I saw them. They are in their house, a lot of them, they cannot cook for themselves. So we had to go to these houses every day. We had a list, Mr. Müller, Mr. Meyer, Mr. Schmitz, typical German names or whatever, and we go from house to house. Ding, ding. Yeah, hello, good morning, what's cooking, everything all right, here's the food. Like this. So, he, and you know, you see the people, these old people, they have nothing. What are they saying to you? Oh, how is the weather today and what's happening, the weather, the weather, every day, the weather, it's now a nice weather today, it's rainy weather, it's hot today, it's cold today. Always like this, you know, they want to grab you, you know, yet said you just speak five minutes to them. You know, it's like prison. Prison in your own home. You know, they just want to, you know, he has just the TV and you, when you come every day and bring him the food. And then you see this, then... You know, you have to think. Look, this life. One day you will be also like him. You will maybe be old. You will maybe not die before, before the 70s, 80s, 90s. You will maybe be old. You also living like this guy, like this woman, poor woman. And there I realized two things. First of all, <laughs> because I had also Muslim friends, but it was not a direct reason why I accepted Islam. But I was thinking about the family life, also in Islam, because I informed myself in this time also about Islam. We will later on go to this. And I see, you know, it's just better. It's working. The family relationship in Islam. The second thing was, I saw that people who had a lot of children, and Islam is also stressing this, are more happy, not as lonely as people who have only a few children. Why in the West they have now so many problems with that they have no children? Why? Because this idea of living a life for fun and so on contradicts the family life. Because freedom does not mean to take no responsibility for anything. And this is what a lot of people think. Freedom is often, even if so, nobody commits, uh, if nobody uh, confirms this and says, yeah, it's like this, what you are saying is right, Mr. Vogel. No, nobody says this. But it's even if subconscious, in, subcon in your, subconsciously it's in your head, freedom is to not take responsibility for anything. And so, when you have kids, you have a lot of responsibility. You see these problems in, this, in the society. Then, I saw another thing. I saw that people who are religious, and I admit it, people who are religious, even when they are Christians, they have more hope than people who are not religious. So, I was thinking, I have to think about religion. 
What, what about religions? And in the same time, you know my favorite boxer, or one of my favorite, he was maybe really my favorite boxer, I had a lot, but was Ivan the Holyfield. I just want to mention this in between. And you know Ivan the Holyfield, he is a strict Christian. He's a strict Christian. And you know, I never, I never told this to anybody. I remember this now. I never told this to anybody. You know, because every time I talk about my story, how I came to Islam, I remember new details. Now I remember one detail, I want to mention it because I don't, maybe I forget it afterwards. Even the Holy Field is a very strict Christian. You know, I, I told you, you know, I lost the belief in Christianity. And it was hurting me. And when I saw him, how he was believing in Christianity, you know what I sometimes was thinking? I was thinking, you know, I would like, I could believe in Christianity like him. I was thinking like this, but I couldn't believe it, you know. I couldn't. Because, you know, I just saw those things I cannot accept. I cannot accept. You know, but, but it came not to my mind, you know, to think about uh, Islam. How, how, how you think about Islam even before 11, uh, uh, 9-11? There was uh, uh, propaganda against Islam. I think it's terrorist or whatever, you know. It, you know, it came not to my mind and I thought at this time, you know, like Islam is uh, like Christianity for Arabs or Pakistanis and, and Turkish people. Like this, you know, you know, I had just this uh, impression. So in this civil service there came a very important point. As I told you, there were all these details that made me think about life. Now there came one particular meeting. At the civil service it was an uh, obligation for us to go for one week to a special uh, place in Trier. It's a town in Germany. It's a bit, maybe 180 kilometers from our home. And there, we had to stay for, all, for one week for special uh, lectures and so on about why the civil service and older people and all this stuff. And then I met a guy. He was in a Christian party. Not the big Christian party in Germany, but a, a little party. And I asked him, what's your, what's your aim in your, in your party? What, 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 what is your aim? What do you want to do? And he told me, yes, we want to destroy Islam in Germany. Yeah, why not? No? He, was, he was saying this. And so I, because I had tolerance, I had a lot of friends, Muslims, they were not practicing the religion, don't think this. So I, th so I was discussing with him. Yeah, why, you know, and this, as all nice people, and what's the problem, we have to have tolerance, and so on. You know? But I had not real arguments, you know, just because I didn't like this guy too much. You know, sometimes you meet somebody, you don't like him from the beginning. And, th and I didn't like him. And I had friends, they were Muslims, and a week before this meeting, I, there was a guy standing, a Muslim, in, the, in my town and he was distributing some flyers about Islam. And there were some information, short information about Islam. And Islam is the religion of all prophets and that all prophets came from the same Almighty God with the same message. You have to worship God alone and nobody but Him. But that the other religions like Christianity and Jew, Judaism were distorted and so on. And I like this idea, you know, it makes sense for me you know, because you ask yourself, why is the Judaism, Christianity, Islam, you know, we believe in one God, but there are a lot of religions, and every religion claims for themselves, we have the only true way to God. No, so this made sense for me, this was the answer, you know. Aha! Therefore, there are a lot of things, you know, the same in this religion. So, but from a particular, things were changed. But... I was not thinking now about accepting Islam, I just said, oh, it's nice. And so I was discussing with him. But what happened afterwards? Afterwards I told myself, now I have to read the Quran. After I was talking with him about Islam, and he was insulting the Prophet, insulting the Muslims, insulting the Quran, I said, you know, I have to read myself. That's the best, or not? You have to know yourself what is written. He says yeah, in the Quran, he does this, this and that. So I told myself, I have to read the Quran by myself. 
So I came back from this journey to my home and I came to the room of my sister and suddenly there was a translation of the means of the Quran in German. You see, subhanallah, you have an intention, Allah uh, gives you immediately the answer. So I said, very good, I told my sister, can I read it? You are no problem. So I read the Quran from the beginning to the end. I, I think almost every day, I can't remember anymore, but some things were strange for me, because you are, you are, you are grown up in society with certain values, yeah, you hear always, Hijab is bad, hijab is bad, you know, scarf is bad, scarf is something cruel, the poor woman, they all don't want to wear hijab, like this, you know. So, you know, you have this, it's, you're like brainwashed, it's bad, you know. Why it's bad? What's, what's the problem, you know. I mean, nobody say, you hey, look, this poor guy from Germany, he's very now, happy. Nobody's saying this. Hey, what's the problem? I, 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 sometimes I've asked some people in Germany, did you ever hear a woman say, oh I don't want to wear hijab? No. But I know, so, maybe there are some, I don't know. I don't, I never hear it from any Muslim woman. But what I hear is, hundred times from Muslim women in Germany, and it's everywhere in Europe. Here are some people, I may be from England, from Britain, we have a brother here, mashallah. You know, it's always that the women have problems with the hijab in the society. They get no job, they have problems in school. You know, always like this. Now in Germany, three women, they were working in a hospital, Catholic hospital. And the Catholic hospital said, no, you cannot, you cannot work anymore like this, with a scarf, in a Catholic hospital. But the nun, besides her, is working with a with scarf. Yeah. That's nice, right? And I want to mention you something before I forget it. Yesterday, no, before yesterday, an, a 56 year old nun in Germany accepted Islam. Allahu Akbar! Allah. Alhamdulillah, 56 year old, she accepted Islam. I think after 30 or 40 years as a nun, Allahu Akbar, I really was very happy, you know, that she. Uh, and a friend of mine, he told me, you know what, and she's immediately wearing a scarf. I said, yeah, I mean, uh, it's not, not a big deal for her, you know, she was even, before she was wearing a scarf, you know, where's the, where's the problem, you know. <laughs> so, okay. So, I said there were some problems, and also this punishments, and so, because you're grown up, yeah, everything, you know, it's a bit cool, no problem. But you don't know there were some things that immediately grabbed me and I was very impressed. First of all, how Allah is described in the Quran. You will never find any book, I guarantee you, Hindu scripture, Buddhist scripture, Christian scripture, Jew Jewish scripture, no scripture will you find where the Almighty God is described with the best attributes like in the Quran. Nowhere. I give you an example. If you say in the Bible, I tell you, <laughs> I don't want to hurt anybody, in the, in the Gospel of Matthew 27, chapter 27, and if somebody does not believe that Christians believe that Jesus is God, he can go to the internet and give the definition Trinity. Trini, uh, Trinity. In Google, definition for Trinity, and you will find it. You know, when Jesus is God, in Matthew 27, no, or 28, doesn't matter, 28 or 27, it's written that when Jesus died, we don't believe that he died on the cross, you know, by the way, according to the Bible, that he, screw, that he cried and said, Eli, Eli, lama zabachtani. It's almost like Arabic. Eli, Eli, ilahi, ilahi, lama, lima, limada. Sabachtani. Why did you forsake me? You know, God dies and cries to God to who? You know, God is dying? God is born? God is saying, why did you forsake me? And is crying for, for help? I mean, excuse me, but this is for me. This is for me. No, this is for me, not God. 
And if you ask your heart, and if you don't look for any excuses, and for any strange reasoning, or strange answers or arguments for this, you will say, no, this is not God. If you go to the Old Testament, if you go to the Old Testament, and like Genesis 6 verse 6, or Genesis 32, you find that there is written that God wrestled with Jacob. And later on there is written that Jacob says, that is told to Jacob, you wrestle with God with men, or you fight with God and men, and you won. I mean, it's something, you know, it's written here. Be, please, don't be angry with me. If you're angry with me, you're angry with your own book. But this is for me a sign that there are some things in the Bible that are not from Almighty God. For example, I, I give you something. That's my reasoning. That's my reasoning. I mean, maybe somebody sees it different. You can, you can go home, you can read it, it's no problem. Now here. 6 verse 6 God saw the wickedness of man was great on earth and that the thoughts in his heart fashioned nothing but wickedness all day long God regretted God regretted having met man on earth, man on earth and his heart grieved you know this means that God didn't know what the man will do before he created him no, I, I mean, it's, it's better when we, when we don't laugh because uh, we don't want to insult or hurt anybody. But we have to think about this. Now you go to the Quran. Believe me, go to the Quran. It's written here in the Bible. It's written that after God created the world in six days, that he had to rest. What is written in the Quran? La taqhudhu sinatu wa la naum. Chapter 2, verse 255. No, he he, he's not sleeping and not even slumber comes on him. Not even, you know, because God is God, you cannot compare with a human being. And if you read the Quran, you see this. You know, a lot of people in Germany, in the West, you know, when we talk with them about God, they say, I don't believe in God. Then you say, yeah, you know, what is a picture, is a dalil, is a burhan, is a proof for a, for a picture maker, you know. He says, yes, I don't believe in God, but I believe there is something. Yeah, what is this something? Who is this? This is God. This is the Almighty God. But the problem is that you... Have your fitra, your natural inclination to the right faith is, is there. And you know that God is no human being. You know that God does not consist of three persons. You know that you cannot paint God. You know this in your heart. And that what you have in your heart, this is the Islamic belief. And everybody who reads the Quran, he knows. This is God. This is the description of the Almighty God. Try it. And I give you the, I guarantee you, give the Quran to some people. In the language, the, the meaning of the Quran. And we have seen so many people who accepted Islam because they read the Quran in their language. Even if we know that the Quran, how he was sent down, not, it's only in Arabic. This is the word of God. The other things are is a translated meaning. But even if in, tra in the trans translated meaning, you know, you will see that this is God. And this was really amazing me. The second thing was, what I saw, is the truthfulness of Muhammad in the Quran. You know, they say Muhammad was a Shida, a liar. Does a liar criticize himself in his own book, what he wrote with his own hands? No. He looked angry and turned, turned around like, like this, you know, the meaning. You know, a liar does not say or does not write this. He does criticize himself in his own book. You know, and a lot of things. Then afterwards, you know, I read some other books. 
you know, um, for example, I read afterwards, I said, no, I have to read the Bible one more time. When I read the Bible, you know, I thought that these questions, these questions, you know, like what I told you before, you know, that there are some things you think, oh, this is strange. Like punishment for fornication and so on and the scarf. Now you read the Bible, you find the same things. For example, for example, scarf, you find it, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 6 and 7, and until the end, chapter 11, you find the scarf in the New Testament, in the Old Testament too. Punishment for fornication and so on, go to Deuteronomy, the fifth book of Moses, you find it there, chapter 22, for example. You find it. So, you ask yourself, how come you hear always, yes, the Christians are criticizing Islam for these things. Even this guy I was talking to, who said we have to destroy Islam, he was talking about this. Yeah, you know, in Islam, there are punishments for stealing and that. It's in your own book. It's in your own book. You know, you, you're criticizing Islam, you say, yeah, we have to destroy Islam in Germany, because, uh, you know, in the Quran, they're standing, you know, fornication and so on. It's in your own book. You know, when you think about this, you think, what's going on here? He, there's something wrong. He's, the shaitan is, is, is in between, you know. He tries to, uh, to disturb you, he tries to give you a wrong impression. You know, that then afterwards I read the Quran one more time. And afterwards I read the Bible one more time, but only the New Testament. And then I read from all religion, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism and so on. You know, like uh, uh, some books. Then I read Sahih al-Bukhari, Muhtasa, the small, the abridged form. Then I read Sira uh, Nabawiya, uh, Ibn Saq, in German. You know, and when I knew about the life of the Prophet, you know, you see something, because there are only three, three possibilities. What he is. First, what the Orientalists is, or what uh, some Christian missionaries say, Elia. Second, Majnun, it's the same what they're saying, even in the Quran, you know, that is crazy. The third, that he's a Prophet. There are no more possibilities. So you see his life, you know from the beginning that he cannot be crazy. It's impossible because what he brings is not crazy. You know, all the people are around him and they're seeing that he is very reasoning. The second thing is a liar. Then you look at his life. You look at his life. You see his life, he was a trader and he had a lot of money. Not very rich but good status in Mecca. And all people were loving him. Forty years was he living with them. And he was famous that he was always speaking the truth. You know, how come a, li- how come a person who is forty years speaking the truth becomes suddenly a liar? You know, in Germany, there is, um, there is a, 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 a something you say, quotation you say, the fox, he's changing his... Uh, what is this? Is uh, not the kameez. I mean, you know, from the fox. Fell. 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 Yes. Yes. Fair. Fair. Four. Four. Yeah. Yes. Okay. No problem. You excuse me. I'm from Germany. Okay. I have a new word now. As you see, I learn also. Fair. Fair. F A R E. Ah, far. Far. Okay, F-U-R-E, no problem. <laughs> you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Yes, okay, the kameez of the fox. Okay, the kameez of the fox. The fox shaves his kameez in the, in the, in the, um, in the kharif. <laughs> autumn, yes, autumn and in the spring. But he does not change his character. You know? And that's the same. If somebody 40 years is speaking the truth, how come suddenly he changed? Why should he change? Yeah, there's two, two possibilities, what they say, for, for money and for rulership. So if we look at the Prophet's life, you know, 
before he was rich, then when he, when he was giving the message, he was punished, persecuted. His followers were punished, killed. No, and he is living there and praying and has nothing to eat. For what? And nowhere he sees a chance that he can win. Nowhere. Because some people are following them and the most people are, 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 are fighting against him. So, after one day, you know, one day, you, one day as a prophet, you will say, no, it's okay, I'm no prophet now. I will, I will go back, you know, to my former life. But he makes it 13 years in Mecca, and he has absolutely no possibility to win. Afterwards, he goes to Medina. And suddenly, with the time, it's right. He gets the rulership, but it was not imaginable that he would ever get this. And then his rulership is even more a proof for his truthfulness. Why? Because look how he was living when he was the ruler. He was living, he was not living in a palace. You know, he was living like, it's almost like a tent. You know, he was sleeping on the ground. So that even, you know, you saw signs from the hard ground on his, on his back. You know, he, uh, he, you know he, he was milking himself. He was, his, his shoes were, 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 were all shoes and he had, to, he had to fit them. You know, look. And what did his wife say? They are the best. You know, your wife is always the best, the best witness for you. <laughs> That's bad, maybe. That's <laughs> for us. You know, the wit they were the witnesses. What did she say? What did Aisha say? كان في خدمة أهله فإذا حضرت الصلاة خرج إلى الصلاة. He was, you know, there for his family, worked for them, helped them in the in the house. Yes, some 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 uh, now some husbands have some problems today with with their wife, maybe. <laughs> you will say, yeah, he was helping at home. And when the prayer came, he went to the prayer. His prayer, how was his prayer at night? Until his feet began to swell. Right? Swell. Huh? It's the same word in, in German. It's only schwell. Of the same. You know, so with this you see absolutely that this person, his prayer, his fasting, his acting, everything shows you that he was a truthful person. So, he is no liar, he is not crazy, he can only be a prophet. And we can make a, a, a particular lecture only for this topic. But I only wanted to mention this, what my impression was, that one day I found in this uh, Ibn Ishaq, I didn't mention this in my Arabic lesson, I told you, I sometimes forget some facts. I found there that there was written that the name of Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible. So, late at night when I was reading this, I went, I, I, I looked for my Bible. At this night, I didn't found the Bible. Because I'm very, you know, my, I'm very, uh, it's always chaos in my home. But now I'm married, alhamdulillah. So my, so my wife, she helps me a bit. And then, I was looking for this verse. You know, I was not a Muslim. Then I looked and heard hear what is saying here. It's John 16, verse 12. Jesus says according to this, I still have many things to say to you. So Jesus was not completing the message. But what did the Prophet say about himself? And he said, That the religion is perfected. In what time? In the time of the Prophet Muhammad. But Jesus says, according to this Bible, we say there are some things wrong and some things right. He says, I still have many things to say to you. But, they would be too much for you now. But when the, and this is, a, is a, a, actually a, a, a Greek word, it can be paraclutus or paraclutus, you know. It just think like this, when the paraclutus comes, he will lead you to complete truth. Who led you to complete truth? Muhammad. You know. And he will lead you to complete two signs. He will not be speaking as from himself, but will say only what he has learned. What we learn in the Quran, 
والنجم إذا هوى ما دل صاحبكم وما غوى وما ينتك عن الهوى إن هو إلى وحي يوحى You know you read it in the Bible in the, in the Quran سورة الزستاء النجم You know what He does not speak from his own inclination It is but a revelation revealed You know the same You know the same words And then what he's saying But he will say only what is done and he will tell you of the things to come. No prophet, not in the Bible, nowhere, is describing what will come like the prophet did by the Quran and the Sunnah. How the hellfire is, how the paradise is, what will happen uh, uh, before the, young, the, the last day. It's nowhere, you know. When I read this, you know, I was really amazed, you know. I was like this, so... Subhanallah. But I still didn't accept Islam, but I liked it, you know, it had made sense to me. And it gave you the answer, why is there good, why is bad, why there is, uh, why there is zulm, oppression. Islam gives you an answer. A lot of people now say, you know, I don't believe in God because there are wars, there are illnesses and everything. You know, Islam gives you an easy answer. Islam gives you a very easy answer. Surah 67 verse 2. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عمله. The one who created life and death to test you who makes the best deeds. Very easy. And he tells you that this life is not there for the establishment or the yes for the establishment of justice, but this is for the next life and this is a test. Very easy answer. فَالْيَوْمَ لَتُذْلَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْءًا وَلَا تُجْزَوْنَ إِلَّا مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمَةً On this day, no soul, on this day, on the last day, no soul will be handled with injustice and they will all receive what they did. Very easy answer. Answer, how, why are you living? What's the purpose of your life? The purpose of your life is وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبَدُوا Surah 51, verse 56. Very easy. You, I did not create man and jinn, but to worship me. And if you worship him, you go to paradise. And if you don't do, you are lost. For eternity. Very easy answer. And even when you worship him, you will have a happy life. Look, this answer. And you see around you the people who accepted Islam. Really, look, look the people. Did you, you know, I tell you what, I tell you what, very honestly, you know, my me, I lived a Western life until 22 years, until I was 22 years. You know, I tell you, nightclub and, you know, everything you can imagine. I don't want to go into detail. You know, I, and I know a lot of people like this, no, you will never find anybody, anybody who will say, you know what, I am so sad now that I am a Muslim, I want to go back to my former life. I want to dance a bit, you know. Nobody will say this. Nobody. No. The opposite. They will say, Alhamdulillah, that Allah bring me out from this zulumat, from this darkness to the light. But unfortunately, a lot of Muslims don't understand it. You know, really. They come to the West, oh yes, now I can drink some alcohol, it's cool here. No. <laughs> Yeah, we are laughing, you know, nobody. You know what? Before I accepted Islam, before I ex <laughs> now I remember one thing. Before I accepted Islam, I met one guy, you know, he came from Morocco, and then suddenly he is drinking alcohol there. I was not a Muslim yet. I think, look, this guy, you know, he comes from Morocco now, and now he thinks, yeah, he can drink alcohol, he can do everything. And I was really, you know, as a non Muslim, mm -hmm. was reading a bit about Islam. I didn't like it. Yes. So what happened? So I began to pray. Because the shaitan, even I was convinced actually, but I read in the Quran like a verse like, you know, if you're Muslim and you go back from Islam, it's a real hard punishment. So I said, oh, you have to be careful. Maybe now I'm convinced and later on I find uh, something. So I have to read more and more and more. So I was careful. But I thought to pray as good, so I begin to pray. Every prophet was praying, and I 
thought you know this this prayer you know in Islam it's good you know like the prophets in the Bible everywhere they're praying with the head on the ground even Jesus Matthew 26 verse 39 so I began to pray I learned the Fatiha Kuru Allahat Kuru Wal Asar At-Tahiyyat Salat Al-Ibrahimiya all these things and I began to pray five times a day of course the Fajr prayer I prayed when I when I wake up from sleep now on the weekend then 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, you know, Fajr you know, it's morning for me, that was morning for me, I didn't know, you know, it was just you know, uh, praying, and then you know, I was praying and praying and praying, convinced about Islam but always the shaitan came, wait, 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 wait because this is what he wants, yeah? he wants you to die as a non-Muslim, to get you for eternity into the hell. Then, one day, a friend of mine, there came a boxer from uh, America, his name is Khalid Jones, he came always, he was a Muslim also. And um, my friend, the Turkish friend, he was also in the Olympics, his name is Cengiz Koç, he went always with him, Friday to the Friday prayer. And at one particular day he told me, he, he called me, yeah, Pierre, you know what, uh, I can't go today. Please take Khalid to the mosque. Because I can't, I can't help him. And so I want to help him. Not even Muslim yet, you know. And <laughs> said, I was sitting there with the tasbih, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. I knew this also. And then suddenly there came a, a, a Moroccan guy, older man, and they asked me, are you the only Muslim in your family? Because I had no beard and I was looking very uh, westernly. Even even now, right? I mean, I mean, okay, the clothes are maybe not so western clothes, but okay. I, I, and he asked me, are you the only Muslim in your family? I didn't accept Islam yet, you know. Hmm. And so at this time, you know, I, I was now, you know, like, um, you know, now I, I said, you have to accept Islam, you know. So I told him, yes, I'm the only Muslim in my family. I shadu an la ila illallah wa shadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Alhamdulillah. And that's the way, and now I know what question will come. What did your parents say, right? <laughs> See? And what did you do afterwards? It's always the same question. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. But maybe you can make a break, a short break. Because I was talking very long. Ah, okay. Alhamdulillah. Or should I continue immediately? What did the parents say? Okay, what did the parents say? You know, in my family, I'm, I'm, I'm Alhamdulillah, you know... Um, I had a big influence on my family always, even in, in, the, in this time. You know, it's not like I'm outside in the family, you know, uh, I'm a poor guy, you know. No, I had always a big influence, alhamdulillah, in the family. So it was not like, you know, that they were saying, now you become a Muslim and, and so on. No, it was very good, especially with my mother. And I was always, also not like this. I went home and said, yeah, I become a Muslim. Please uh, do this and that for me. No. You know, I just, I just practiced the religion and uh, my mother, w two, two or three weeks after I converted to Islam, I, uh, I uh, made a journey with her to Egypt. And so I was praying always there, you know, and um, so she saw Islam from another perspective. And of course the mother is always influencing the father a bit. You know, maybe the son can better influence the mother than the father, and the mother can influence the father. It's very good. So, at this time, you know, at the first time it was a bit strange for them, especially for my father, when one year afterwards, I, or one and a half year afterwards, I quitted boxing. One and a half year afterwards, I quitted boxing, you know, and then... You know the newspaper also wrote about this because I was in this big stable from box, uh, from this uh, Wilfried Sauerland and so um, you know all the people asking yeah why you know he's not a boxer is he becoming crazy you know you know when you are boxing you're not crazy now when you become Muslim and you quit boxing then you are crazy you know <laughs> so um, but I didn't care too much about this and um, 
Of course, I had a lot of friends and the ways were later on separate. Uh, you know, I went another way. Now, these people went to the disco, to the nightclub, and I went to the mosque. So, later on, I had not too much to do with them anymore. But uh, I had not, not, a good, not so much relationship with them. Of course, when I see them, I say, hi, what's cooking, everything alright, my friend, blah, 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 like this. But, but not real, real relationship, you know, it's like, you know each other. Also not that, uh, like, we are fighting against each other, each other, each other but, uh, like, you know, it's like, um, this, uh, more distance. But also some people, you know, because they want this distance, of course, I want to invite them to Islam and they know all what the true way is now. And not all, maybe, but a lot, they know what, what, what my, in my opinion, is a true way. And uh, with my parents now, they're getting closer and closer. And I, I, two days ago, my mom, she uh, 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 called me here in, uh, in Qatar. And she said, you know, now there is a... Um, agitation against Islam in Germany and so on and she said you know if we didn't know the Muslims like we know them now because of because you became a Muslim we would maybe also think bad about the Muslim we would think the same thing and she said you know I'm now because my mother has a restaurant and she said you know I'm telling the people always you know you have to know Islam you know, you only know the Muslims who are not practicing Islam, but you have to know Islam. Islam is different. So, uh, she's making good da'wah actually for Islam, you know. And uh, she also said Shahada, really, but uh, she's not practicing, you know, because maybe it's too hard for her also, in this environment, with this job and everything, to practice it. You know, my father is also a... You know, uh, an environment, you know, it's very, you know, it has nothing to do with Islam. You know, he's a Harley Davidson driver and so, you know. Uh, in a very famous motorcycle club, you know. Maybe you know them. So he's, of course, nothing to do with this, uh, with this religion. And, but they're closer and closer and talking good about, and they're making good da'wah, as I told you. And my sister, she also said the Shahada, she, uh, she, she, she named her son Abdul Samad, Bilal Abdul Samad, but she's not really practicing because it's uh, the environment. You know? Then I have a, a brother, he's 15, he's very lazy, but he also says, he, uh, you know, some weeks ago when I met him in Germany, he told me, you know what, uh, I also want to begin now a bit more to learn about it. He's 14 years old, you know. But, uh, little bit inshallah may Allah lead him then my cousin she is alhamdulillah practicing Islam my uh, cousin she is uh, she is wearing scarf and praying and so on she has two kids Abdullah and Jalil you know all this uh, grand, grandchildren of my, my grandmother the name is now that six grandchildren Hamza Rumaysa Amina Bilal Abdullah Jalil six names good right Alhamdulillah. And I hope they will increase, inshallah. Then, maybe you want to ask me what happened afterwards when I accepted Islam. Maybe there is a question, right? But I'm too tired now. Okay. <laughs> no, when I became Muslim, you know, I wanted to lead and learn and everything. And I wanted to marry. So, you know, I, I wanted to marry and I, a friend of mine, he is married to a Moroccan woman and I told her, you know, you have to look for me, you know, maybe you know women and so on and then she looked for Alhamdulillah and so I, <laughs> I find my, found my wife and I married my wife I was only eight months Muslim you know some people often, unfortunately, often when you say you become Muslim the first question is, uh, why did you become Muslim? Uh, because uh, uh, of your wife? Uh, I'm always wondering how this happens, you know. Why the people are thinking like this. Maybe they think, oh, he saw a nice woman and then he was convinced Islam is a true religion. Or, you know, I'm, I'm wondering how this happens, you know. But the people always ask this. I say, that, no, no, my wife, I met her after I accepted Islam. And um, afterwards, 
in 2002 I married her and afterwards I met a guy, a Moroccan guy from Germany and I was two years around with him and he was like a dyer there and I was always, almost every day with him around going from mosque to mosque and so on and in, two, uh, in uh, 2004 he left Germany and then in 2004 I went to Mecca and I gave them my uh, application for uh, studying in Mecca you know, and I gave the application without a skia, you know, like a, a sheikh is writing, yeah, this is a nice guy and so on, you can use it for good for da'wah or something. Without the skia, without translation, normally you have to translate. And I was a bit too old, normally 25. And they are very strict in Mecca with this, normally. And I was, at the same time, I was studying Arabic in Germany with the uh, uh, Orientalists. And then, Subhanallah, I never expected that they will accept me in the, in, the, in the university. But Allah, when He wants something, you cannot change it. If Qadr Allah ma sha, alhamdulillah fa'al wa. Then three weeks before the, study, the studies in 2004 began, I got the letter. You accepted in Mecca. It, it was in Arabic. I told my wife, please read to me what, what's, what's going on. Yeah, you accepted. You have now to bring this and that, you know, authentication of all these papers. <gasps> a lot to do. How, how can we handle this in two weeks now? It's imp- uh, three weeks, it's impossible. All these people have to go to Berlin, to this place, to that. I was only, t- uh, you know, with the telephone, you know, this paper and that paper. And, and I had two more problems. Why? Because I had to fly to Morocco and all, 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 uh, um, already paid and when I go to Morocco I fly I cannot handle all these papers the second problem my wife was pregnant and I cannot leave my wife and I go to Mecca and she's pregnant so what happened we called this uh, travel agency and we asked them about the flight to Morocco so they told us, yeah, the flight is now, uh, has now changed. It's not anymore to Marrakesh, it's now to Casablanca. We told you, no, we paid for Marrakesh, not for Casablanca. So Alhamdulillah, it was cancelled and we got the money back. But no money, Alhamdulillah. It was the first, first problem, away. The second problem, maybe it's a bit sad, but you know what, Allah decrees for you, it's always good. You know this, uh, you know miscarriage, yeah? The children died, you know, in the, in, the, in, the, in the womb. So I was able to go to Mecca, alhamdulillah, because of this reason. And after studies there, in 2006, and my wife was uh, pregnant again and got the child at this time. And, uh, you know, you sometimes think something, something is bad for you and it's maybe good for you. And I came back and uh, ten, nine hours after the um, birth, the child became blue in, his, in, in her face and uh, had to go to the emergency because they had a heart problem. So I was not able to continue the studies. But Alhamdulillah, because of this reason, we began to make dawah in Germany. And inshallah, I will find another way to get a lot of knowledge in Islam, inshallah. You know, inshallah. Pray for me, <laughs> inshallah. Jazakallah khairan, because I knew these two questions will maybe come and uh, from interest. It's now a bit late. I always want to look if the, if the clock is here, but <laughs> it's only a picture for me. And I thank you. I just want to mention, I have some other, on Friday I have in Fana this um, Friday prayer. And um, on uh, Friday, in the, no, no, tomorrow in the evening, Where? Barazan or something like this, right? Barazan, it's in Arabic, right? And on, uh, no. So on Friday in the evening, I'm in the Saudi Dawah Center or something. So I have another lecture about Islam and Christianity. So for you it's good when you bring somebody there, you know, from the non-Muslim community here. You know that nobody goes out of Qatar but by accepting Islam. And if a non-Muslim is here, you know, we are always ready if you want to accept Islam <laughs> we are ready Jazakum Allah khairan
أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك أنت الشيخ يريد أن تقول شيئا الحمد لله السلام عليكم أزالكم الله خيرا وأحسن إليكم I have two questions, two questions for brother uh, after the problem of Marwa Sharbini how bad is the Islamophobia in Germany and how can Western Muslims stand up to it? Very good question. Also, really, I was not expecting this question. And Jazakallah Khairan or Jazakallah Khairan, I don't know if women wrote this or men, but you know, this was really an, uh, an issue that was really hurting me, what happened with Marwa Sharbini. And I could, I could now deliver a lecture. I could give a lecture about this topic, what happened there, because I tell you very, sincere, uh, very honestly, what happened there, even now the world does not really know what happened there. And I was in the first war, you know, at the, ta at the day when she was killed, we were called by one Arabic guy who, know, who, knew the, or who knows the, uh, the husband. And he told us what's happened there. Then we were all day, we were looking in TV, what's cooking, what's happening, you know, we want to hear, see something. Then late in the evening, they came, women stepped in the court. That's it, you know, nothing about Islam, nothing about hijab, nothing about that she was killed because of her hijab, because she is a, is a, was a practicing Muslimah. Nothing. Then something written in internet, on the third page, suddenly you find something, and it was at 12 o'clock at night, this interview. So what did we do? We were talking to some brothers, and these brothers, they translated and wrote letters, emails, in Indonesian language. I know one, one friend of mine, uh, a German, he knows Indonesian language, in Turkish, in Arabic, in English, and they sent this information to 15,000 TV and uh, uh, newspaper stations. Otherwise, maybe you would never hear, uh, had never heard something about this, you know, because the brothers, alhamdulillah, did this. Then I went to Dresden, and I wanted to talk to this Tarek Asherbini, to the brother of Marwa, because he came to Germany. Because what we wanted to do, I said, you know, I don't want this, this woman that, that, she, that they threw her out like garbage out of Germany, you know, on the ground. I said, we Muslims, we have to, to really... Uh, um, uh, what? Prote no, not protest. We have to carry her on our shoulders. We have to carry her on our shoulders. You know, I want the biggest Janazah ever in Germany. I wanted all Muslims come. You know, I went to, uh, to, 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 to Dresden. And when I entered Dresden, it's a town, it's, it's smaller than Doha, you know. You know, I called this guy, he told me a street. This, I gave the street in in the navigation system. The street is not there in, the in Dresden. Then he gave me another, another place, it's also not there. North, north uh, uh, train station, it's not there. Then he says, yeah, in the main train station we, we meet there after 30 minutes. He doesn't come. Another guy, he doesn't come. You know, what's cooking here? What, what do they want? Does he want to hide what's happened there? Because of course, when we make a big announcement in internet that all people from Germany have to come to the Janaza, then a lot of people will know what's happened there. You know, then, he, he phoned, he call, I call him, he says, yeah, um, I'm now on the way to uh, the airport or something. I said, yeah, you told me you will come here. That we can meet. Yeah, afterwards. Do you come with the brother of Marwa? He says, uh, I don't know. We don't know. I, I did not come for you to drink t uh, to, uh, to shy with you a tea. No, I came to talk to the brother that we can make a big janaza in Germany for this woman that was the, who, who was killed for, for her religion, subhanallah. You know, then suddenly, finally, I found this, found this, uh, uh, this brother. You know, this guy from the embassy, this ambassador is looking at me. I don't know what's, what's going on, you know. I say, yeah, you know, we want to make the janaza here. If you make the janaza in Dresden, here's nobody. Because they wanted to bring Mavash.
It's all right. You hear me? Yeah. Okay. Then I have to raise my voice a bit. You know, they... You know, because, you know, they had to bring the uh, Mawa Sherbini, you know, the, the, to Berlin first and from Berlin to Cairo. Or, or to Alexandria, I don't know anymore. But I said, you know, when, we, when you make the Janazah and Dries, there are no, uh, only a little community of Muslims. So when she's in Berlin, let's make the Janazah in Berlin because there are a lot of Muslims. Because they will not come 200 kilometers, and in Berlin there are maybe 300,000 Muslims, you know. So I say, yeah, let's, let's make the Janazah in Berlin. You know, otherwise, you know, nobody, nobody would care about her. So, I gave them my number, that they call me. The next day... You, you are caring about Marwa Shabini more than the Islamophobia? No, I, I, yeah. I, I, I tell you, no, this is because this is the topic. This is the topic. Why they want to hide this fact what's happened there? Because this Barbara Shabini, they didn't want. We wanted that this will become popular. What happened there? That she was killed because of Islam. You know what the guy said in the court? You never hear it. He said, you have no right to live. When he began to step her. Why? And we are asking, where comes this hate from? Where? You know, I, wrote, I, I read it in the newspaper. A very, very, very famous newspaper in Germany. I, wrote, I read it there. Where come, you know, this hate? Where does this hate come from? I thought, you are really asking where this hate comes from? Look at what you are writing about Islam and Muslims. You know, because there's a tendency to... A tendency of agitation against Muslims. What is agitation? To give wrong information about, about people, about group of people, individuals, to let hate and fear grow against them. And this is what's happening. And how do they do this? You know, you show a picture of a bomb, and afterwards you show somebody with a beard he's standing. You know, like this. You show a picture of somebody who kills anybody, afterwards you show a picture. And then you say, and this hypocrisy, you say, yeah, not all Muslims are like this. They have also different Muslims. Look, these Muslims are very nice people. They are drinking alcohol, they are not praying. And then they make an interview. Yeah, no, I am against Islam. This is a good Muslim. <laughs> so, so, you, so you get the impression, you know, all Muslims, who are against terrorism, who, who are uh, not terrorists, these are Muslims that are not practicing the religion. You know, I guarantee you, I maybe gave 100 lectures, and I always mentioned we are against terrorism. And I gave arguments against it from Quran and Sunnah. We are against honor killings, because it's not from Islam. We are against criminal acts from Muslims. And I call all youngsters here in Germany to be law-abiding, that they are not stealing, not, not raping, not killing, or anything else. You never hear something in the newspaper. Why? Because that is against their picture. Because when they show a practicing Muslim with a beard, who is talking against it, that, makes a, that, that breaks their picture, what they want to, cre want to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to yeah. produce. You know, that's a problem. You know, I gave, a, I gave really, I gave a lecture, I gave a lecture, you know, about, about the purpose of life in the university in Düsseldorf. Afterwards, a big picture of me in the newspaper. Hate preacher, la la, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, what was I, uh, he insults women. Does hate preacher insult women? Radical Muslim insults women. I was thinking, what did I say? <laughs> it was no lecture about a Muslim woman. What have I done? You know, and I looked at the videotape. You know what I did? The insulting of women. I said to the Muslim audience, to the women, I said, you can hear me? Yes? Allah, Allah. Okay. I said to them, I said to them, you know what? A good job for women is, you have to become uh, like teachers because we want to open kindergarten for Muslims. This was insulting. Mashallah, this insult. If every woman feels insulted now, I, I, I say, I'm sorry. This is insulting. Does she insult? Another time, I was talking against terrorism. 
against criminal acts, against everything, what is afterwards uh, written in the newspaper? <coughs> Nothing. They don't mention it. Ha- I don't know, maybe a hundred times. If they mention it, you know how they mention it? Like this. He says he were against terrorism. What do you understand from this? You said, yeah, he says this, but <laughs> in his heart is something else. <laughs> in the front of the people he's talking this and then he's talking that. You know, this is it. This is agitation against Muslims. In the media. In the internet you find something else. You find in Germany. In Germany. This is the reason why Mawar Shabini was killed. And nobody wants to hear it. You know, you find there, kill, no, raise up the beard, the, the, the people, the Muslims whose beard, by cutting the heads off. And kill, and, ah, good. And burn their children. And, and uh, rape the women. This is, you find in some websites, you know. I tell you something, you know. They to hear what's cooking there. That's a problem. Why are they not writing about this? Why are you not knowing this? These are only known the people from the West. Because this is agitation against Islam. And I tell you, two years ago, I said in a lecture, if this agitation continues like now, there will Muslims be killed on the streets. It's not only in Germany. You know, there's all nonsense this racism and stuff you know this is nonsense it's not about racism this is a new form of hate against other thinking people racism is I hate you because you're black or I hate you because you are uh, uh, I don't know where you're from you know and, or a black guy hates me because I'm white or something like this this is racism But this is a new form. This is hating somebody because of his religion if he's abiding to his religion. And calling for destroying him. You know? They do it like this. You have picked... Really, I told before, I can give a lecture about this topic. But that's the reason why she was killed. And you see now exactly that they don't want to change it. They don't want to change it. And this is now, we may be giving everywhere lectures in Germany now on the open street about this. This is something they like very much. Big boxes here and there, and then we talk about this case, what happened there. And we are talking about this agitation against Islam. And we will continue, inshallah. And make dua for us. Why there was a Quran, a mushaf in your sister's room? Yes, my, uh, my sister at this time... She, uh, she had a friend who was a Muslim and, and so she had the Quran but my sister was no Muslim at this time uh, she was also not very interested in it yeah. last time a man invited you to have a boxing match with him here and you refused, why? yeah because yeah, maybe I changed my opinion today no, no, I don't change my opinion. <laughs> no, because it's, uh, boxing is in Islam and this by credit, it is not allowed. Of course, boxing training is good, you know, you have to stay in shape and so on. It's not bad. <laughs> but, uh, but to hit somebody in face is not allowed. Thank you, brother.